Hello everybody. Welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. Subscribe and select alerts to be updated to the channel's content. In this film, we look at the Swiss cheese model and a fatal gyroplane accident. The narrative is from the NTSB report that I've linked in the description. An experimental and amateur built auto gyro Cavalon was destroyed during its collision with the ground and post crash fire following a forced landing in Sebring, Florida. The pilot and passenger were sadly fatally injured. It happened on October the 30th, 2018, and the accident pilot was a very experienced gyroplane pilot, instructor, and examiner. He was well known, well liked amongst the US gyro community, and one of the first reactions to the crash was, it can't be him, and if it can happen to him, it can happen to anyone. The NTSB will issue their final report in due course, but for now, the issued factual report contains some discussion points, and with the usual caveat of making no blame, it is worth highlighting some key points to try and enhance safety, especially for those new or student pilots who might assume that with the experience the accident pilot had, what chance anyone else? James Reason's Swiss cheese model is frequently referred and widely accepted within aviation as a common ground for discussing safety systems, and there is little doubt that the future to improving safety in the areas that snag this aircrew will likely be discussed and examined well into the future using that model. There seems opportunity by multiple sources from aircraft builder, US importer, aircraft dealer and the flight crew themselves to have got involved and stopped this event. They didn't and the discussion will ultimately become why. Question marks initially started with the aircraft build which centre upon the aircraft builder and Auto Gyro USA. Indeed, the original test pilot refused to fly the aircraft due to improperly rigged flight controls. Sometime later, the original owner has given up and wants to sell, and Auto Gyro USA were tasked with brokering the sale. The accident pilot becomes involved via his position within that company. The aircraft was collected the day before the accident, and it and the ferry flight home threw up even more question marks. Perhaps an air show on November the 1st gave a motivation to press on when in normal times a pause for thought may have been given and certainly there seems much to give thought to. However, on October the 30th the aircraft crashes and the investigation indicates that the rod end was not attached to the pitch horn at the time of the accident. It will be interesting to see what, if any, NTSB recommendations come in the final report but in the interim, the message must be, if in doubt, then no doubt. Stop and seek advice. Don't let this be you. 